Last weekend, my 34 male wife, 35, received an invitation to her eldest sister's wedding. The invitation states that she and our three children are invited with no mention of me, e.g. four seats have been reserved in honor of wife, child, child, and child. I was insulted and thought my wife would agree that that was rude. However, after she spoke to her mother to clarify if I really wasn't invited, she said she was still planning to attend. I said it wouldn't be fair for her to go without me and that I didn't give my consent for my children to go without their father. She said I'm being unreasonable as her nieces and nephews would be there and it was a big family event. My argument is that if it's so important the whole family attends, then I should be invited. If not, it can't be that important and she shouldn't go. Who's in the wrong here? Am I the idiot for refusing to let my kids go without me? Not the idiot. Common sense dictates that if you invite the wife to a family event, you invite the husband. You're married, her family is now yours, and yours is also hers. Something's going on. Whether it's the family trying to break you up or her having someone on the side, something is up. Better check your finances to make sure nothing is awry. What clarification was offered? I must admit I wouldn't likely go to a wedding if my SO was intentionally uninvited. There was an issue of chronic infidelity on my part that we've dealt with as a couple and moved forward from. Around that time, in-laws also decided they didn't like an arrangement my wife and I had. She worked for my company off the books. My business now makes enough to pay her a salary, so that's not an issue anymore, but things were difficult when trying to get the business off the ground. Our agreed-upon arrangement was that instead of salary, I would cover all our bills and send her a monthly stipend for shopping and groceries. The infidelity was almost 10 years ago, and my wife and I got past it and went on to have our two youngest children. And until the incident in 2020, the family had been willing to get along with me despite infidelity, so that's irrelevant. The incident was with her sister and had nothing to do with me but her disrespecting an older family member. At the time, my wife and her brother agreed that she was out of line, but when the argument between her and I escalated, and later the dust settled, everyone turned on me. My wife told me it was best to let sleeping dogs lie and she would keep me separate from her family. Otherwise, she and our kids wouldn't be welcome anymore. Her family punished me because I called out my wife's younger sister for causing drama. Before I could apologize, the whole family had blocked my number and told my wife to keep things separate going forward. They force her to act like a single mother having to split holidays and Christmases with the kids between her family and me rather than just swallow their pride and choose unity. Wait, wow. Wow, dude, you're a loser. Your wife must have horrible self-esteem to stay with you. Hope she takes the kids to the wedding and never comes back. She can certainly do better and the kids would be better off without you too. Oh, I knew something was up. You don't invite your younger sister and her kids to your wedding and just leave the husband out for no reason at all. This was very missing, missing reasons. Chronic infidelity is a new one though. Not just cheating once, but chronic infidelity. Yeah, the family doesn't have to get over it just because his wife did. No way would I want him at my wedding. Agree. Opie's a serial cheater, financial abuser, and controlling idiot. Gotcha. He's a piece of work. That's why he wasn't invited. The fact that Opie hid all this from the main story shows he knows that he's the idiot, but wants everyone to side with him so he can show it to his wife and tell her she shouldn't go. You are the idiot, OP. This is called the consequences of your actions. You got your wife to move past it, her family has not. I'm so dumbfounded at how many people who ask questions leave out the major details of their being an idiot. Context is key, and this context shows OP is not a good person. I love how OP sweeps the cheating part away in a sentence but focuses on the business aspect like that's the real problem here. It's actually a huge problem. When he says she was working for him off the books, he means she was not getting paid. Notice how he says it's his business, not theirs. That's a pretty big flag too. It's not just his if she was putting in blood, sweat and tears for free. Plus, was he cheating the whole time? Jesus, she was fully financially dependent on him even though she was working. I wonder if that had anything to do with her decision to forgive him for cheating. I'm mad at her and I've never met him. Her family must hate everything he touches. Last Saturday, my wife had her baby shower, which was a very long event from midday until 10 p.m. Prior to this, while we were planning the baby shower and sending out invites, I'd initially intended to invite my entire family. However, my wife informed me that the baby shower would be female only, which confused me. I've attended baby showers for all my female relatives in my family, 
so it felt like this was a cultural difference. Unfortunately, this meant I had to embarrassingly uninvite people after sending out invitations. Initially, I didn't make a big deal out of it because it was my wife's special day. However, later on, she told me that the no men rule also extended to me. I thought she was joking, but she was serious, explaining that it's customary in her family to have a ladies-only baby shower. At this point, I became upset. In a baby shower that I was paying for and planning, I was excluded from my wife's event in my home. I found it absurd. The party lasted about 10 hours, and I was expected to leave my house for the entire duration. We argued back and forth about this issue. It seemed ridiculous to me that, as her husband, I was not allowed to attend my wife's baby shower. Her sister overheard our argument and supported my wife's stunts, saying that men are typically not invited to baby showers and that my presence would ruin the atmosphere and vibe. This disagreement occurred three weeks before the baby shower, and even the day before the event, I tried reasoning with my wife again to let me stay, but she still refused. She also told some of her family members about our argument because I got an angry text from her mother telling me to just listen to what she says since the baby shower is for her, not me, and that she can decide who attends or doesn't. I still refuse to leave since it's our home and I'm literally paying for the event. I managed to compromise by just chilling in the backyard, where everyone else was inside. My wife still wasn't happy about it though. Am I the idiot here? Why would anyone want to attend a 10-hour baby shower, let alone host it? What was happening at this event? 10 hours? And why are you hosting your own baby shower? It's a gift-giving event, which is why someone else is supposed to host it for you. Not the idiot. The fact that you want to be so involved should be cherished, not punished. His being in the backyard seems a lot less petty when you remember that the baby shower was 10 hours long. But I can't get past OP paying for the shower. I've never seen that before. In my experience, baby and bridal showers are given by close friends as part of the gift. Having the new mom bride plan and paying for the shower is ridiculous. She's got enough going on already. I'm from Texas, so maybe it's a sudden thing. Everyone's the idiot. You both should work on communicating better with each other. Baby showers are traditionally female only, and co-ed baby showers are a more recent thing, with some cultures adopting the practice more openly than others. Your wife shouldn't have assumed that you knew this tradition, though, and should have expressed her intentions while you guys were planning. You're not an idiot for feeling bad because you felt excluded, even when involved in the planning. However, you displayed idiot behavior when you made the event about you and how you paid for everything. After all, you are raising a family together. Teamwork and understanding are essential. So, a long time ago, I, 20 female, bought four tickets to the Taylor Swift concert in our city this past weekend. It was going to be me, Marissa, Haley, and Aiden. We're all besties from high school. Everyone paid me for the tickets and planned accordingly. We planned on getting there early to hang out for a bit. Everyone knew this plan for a long time, but for some reason, Marissa couldn't or didn't get off work. She's a server at a breakfast restaurant and normally doesn't work too late. This was all on Saturday, by the way. I also have an older sister who lives in this city and wanted to go but couldn't. She begged me to be a backup in case anything happened. We don't live very close to the city, like an hour's drive, sometimes longer, so we planned on leaving at 2pm. At around 1, I started texting everyone to get ready because I had to start picking people up. Marissa told us she should get off around 12, but didn't say anything when I texted the group. I texted her individually and called her. No response. I started picking up everyone. She was the last person to get it. I kept calling and we waited outside her house for a bit. I said, screw it, so I went to the door. Someone answered and said Marissa hadn't come home yet. Together, we decided to leave without her. We got 20 minutes into the drive when all our phones started blowing up. It was Marissa apologizing and saying there were issues at work and she had to stay, but she was speeding home and would be ready in 15 minutes. It was like 2.30 at this point. Aiden called her and explained what had happened, and I could hear her screaming her head off at him. He eventually hung up on her. My sister met us there and Venmoed the money to Marissa in the exact amount she paid me. We had a blast. I'm asking if I was an idiot because we haven't heard from Marissa since, even after apologizing. Wow. You are the idiot, and I would never want to be friends with you or your group. She paid for her ticket. You couldn't have transferred her ticket to her, most tickets are e-tickets now anyway, and said, hey, sorry we left, but here's your ticket, meet us there. That's such a crappy thing to do. 
especially for a Taylor Swift show when you know tickets are impossible to find and it will probably be a couple of years before she tours again. I don't blame Marissa for cutting all of you off completely. I hope Marissa sues her. The concert started at 8 p.m. 8 p.m., people? I was rationalizing in my head, but even if it started at 5 p.m., there was still time for her to wait for at least an hour. Personally, I would have waited until we had to leave, or else we'd be late. Opie, you killed a friendship for 30 minutes. You still arrived a few hours early for the show. You wanted your sister to go instead of your friend. Shame on you. Yep, you gave her ticket away at 2 p.m., the time you were supposed to collect her. There was no wait time. You gave her ticket away when she had yet to be 10 minutes late, when you knew you were going to arrive four hours before the doors even opened. It wasn't yours to sell, and then you sold it for the face price. If Marissa couldn't go, it was her right to sell it at the best possible price. You scammed her out of hundreds of dollars. So yes, you stole her property and scammed her. You are the idiot. You haven't lost your friendship. You sold it out. You willingly trashed it. This past weekend, my family went camping with a group of my wife's friends. There were three families there, six adults and eight kids. We took our boat, and before we left, I told my wife that the only thing I ask is that I have time to go fishing at least once during the trip. I told her I would take the kids tubing and take people on leisurely boat rides, but that I wanted to go fishing for at least one of the three nights we were there. When I say at night, I mean at night. The lake we were camping near is well known for its walleye fishing. And anyone who fishes for walleye knows that the best bites come before sunrise and after sunset, sometimes late into the night, especially during the summer. And after talking with a few locals, they said the nighttime bite has been very good recently. So I plan to spend days taking people out on the boat and, at least one night, head out and do some night fishing. The first two nights, I didn't get a chance to go out fishing because the other families had game nights planned and my wife wanted me to participate. Think of family-based games where each family is a team. It was fun and I'm glad we did it. The kids ate it up. The morning of our last full day there, I told my wife I would be fishing that night and she agreed. After dinner on the third night, I started preparing to head out fishing. It was about 8 p.m. when I was just about to leave the dock. My wife came running over in a panic. Someone driving around on a golf cart hit one of her friend's family dogs. The dog didn't make it. She told me to come to help her talk to the kids about it because they were all very upset. I hung around for an hour or so and helped console the kids. Obviously, everyone was pretty shaken up by it. The kids of the family with the dog wanted to do a funeral service for the dog, so I stayed for that too. By the time that ended, it was 9.30 p.m. The adults got the kids settled in with a movie to try and calm them down, so I told my wife I was going to head out fishing. She immediately got mad and asked me how I could even think of fishing after what happened. I told her there was nothing else for me to help with and that I was looking forward to fishing the entire trip. I reminded her that she agreed it was okay, but she said that things had changed and it would look bad if I went fishing while everyone else was helping her friends grieve. I told her that I'd done the family thing the entire week and that I was sorry about what happened, but that shouldn't mean I have to give up the one thing I wanted to do for myself. She just turned and walked away without saying anything. I ended up fishing for a few hours and everyone was asleep when I got back. My wife barely spoke to me the next day and the entire ride home. She told me I made her and myself look bad by leaving like that when everyone else stayed to help. Am I the idiot for going fishing? Not the idiot. You did stay. What did she want you to do? Hold a seance to see if it was okay with the dog to go fishing? I know it's horribly tragic. It was also 100% preventable by being a responsible dog owner. Why your wife cares so much about others' opinions is mind-boggling. I don't want to judge the wife too harshly, but it sure seems like she cares more about looking good in front of her friends than the actual feelings of everyone else. My mother was exactly like this all the damn time, and it drove us nuts, all while growing up and well into adulthood. Everyone else's opinions were always more important no matter what, even if we barely knew them. Now that she is, in her own words, too damned old to care anymore, she realizes just how stupid and annoying that really was. OP, you did more than enough in this situation. You stayed for most of the memorialization of the poor dog. There were plenty of people there. Always traumatic to lose a pet, but it wasn't your dog. But it was your holiday which you wanted to make the most of. It's not fair or appropriate to force someone to put on some visual act of feigned grief. I'm 33 female, pregnant now with a baby boy. My husband and I are so excited. 
We tried for a few years and ended up going through IVF. We chosen a baby name we love. It's not a unique name, I promise, a very standard name. We decided not to share the name with anyone until we gave birth. There are a few reasons for this. The name is significant to us. We don't want outside opinions. We went through IVF and were very open about our journey. We prefer to keep this part private. My mother-in-law is throwing us a baby shower at the end of this month. She reached out today and said we really should be sharing the name with people. We ended up getting into a bit of an argument about it. She told us that it was incredibly rude not to share something as small as a name with our guests that are coming, giving us presents, etc. She said everyone was just very curious and excited for us. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Telling you've converted to Judaism and won't be showing the name until after the bris on the eighth day in accordance with tradition. That'll distract her at least. But no, the only thing you owe people coming to your shower is a heartfelt thank you. Nothing else. It was incredibly rude not to share something as small as a name. If it's that small, why is it incredibly rude not to share it? Does your mother-in-law even listen to herself? Don't share OP because you know that with that attitude there will be comments. When we were pregnant, we decided that the third person to hear our daughter's name, after my husband and I, would be the daughter. He whispered it to her as he carried her to the NICU. I had a C-section. Then we told people, after we'd become our little family of three. Not the idiot. Mother-in-law is wrong. She's belittling your decision by guilting you to spill the name. She has lots of choices and is choosing to not support you. People who love you are overjoyed about your new little one and will wait until you announce this decision. You're wise to hold a firm boundary on something important to you. Congrats.